All right, and we're back with part two of uh, Fullmetal Alchemist Dual Sympathy, and I um, learned a few things from uh, the comments section um, last time, I guess. And uh, most important being that you can use those giant uh, com I had seen in the preview videos, like these giant combo attacks that you could use, and I was like, well, how do you do that? Uh, well, it's really simple. Apparently, you just hold down the button that... Um, you know, uh, <laughs> that uses the cannon or the wall or whatever, and you just press it down and hold it, and I was like, oh, oh, okay, well, that's very simple, actually, I should just, um, duh, oh, well. So, uh, yeah, this is, um, the next adventure is based off of episode five, because, um, episode three is a flashback, and episode four is a dumb mystery story, probably one of the worst episodes in the series. It's not that bad, it's just sort of, eh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's passable, um, it is, and, but the, the biggest problem Episode 4 has, while I'm talking about the show, I guess, is um, actually not that the story itself is bad, because the story itself is okay. It's, nah, it's alright. Um, it, it's actually that it's like one of the only episodes in all of FMA, because it's such a tight series and everything connects in some way um, so well. It's one of the few episodes that doesn't really connect to the rest of the show at all. I mean, it doesn't, you're never going to have a callback to it, there's nothing about it that, you know, um, I, I don't want to say stands out, but that, that has anything to do with the overall story. Um, and even so, some of the other, like, I know, what's, what's another one that people hate? It's like episode 34, 35, it's the, um, uh, of, it's the one with the disease, Johnny Bosch plays a minor character in it, but there's this, like, um, awful disease that turns people into stone or whatever in this one town, and a lot of people hate that episode, and I'm like, I, how can you? It's, it's a great character piece for the villains in the series, um, for Lust especially. Um, okay, this actually took me a bit to mess with, because the touchscreen, when you're using a mouse as, as your, as your touchscreen, which is what I'm using here, it's, it's like, just go, bleh, bleh. you can't actually see the, the cursor, but it's like, N it must pull rope, but you're supposed to, like, pull it, I guess, in a certain direction, and it's, it's different when you're not actually touching it with your finger. Anyway, so, um, weirdly enough, they included this little thing with Walmart. So yeah, this is based off of episode five. I was just going on a tangent there, but, um, I, you know, the, the only episode, I do mean the only episode from the original series that I can't defend, that I think was a stupid episode, should not have been made, serves zero purpose to anything or anybody, is the Siren episode. Um, and I think some people actually like that one. I don't know why, but that one, like, both doesn't have anything to do with the overall series, and it doesn't even fit the tone. It's just dumb. Um, so that's the only one I can't defend, but, like, you know, I, I... I'm not sure I get people's qualms with some of the other ones, because they do tie in very well. The, the one with the sickness that turns people into stone in episode 35 or whatever, yeah, it's depressing as hell, and it's not about the main characters, it's about, you know, the villains and, and these little side characters that she destroys the lives of, but it's a really good character piece. And I was holding that down for a while, as you can see, trying to test and see if I could make, like, a super statue, and I was like, no, it's... no, of course not. This is just a temporary thing you're supposed to be able to do. Um, so yeah, the idea here is, uh, there are terrorists on this train, and you have to defeat them, and, um... Uh, even then, like, this is definitely not filler. People are like, well, what does that have to do with the overall story? Well, um, they explained it at the end of the episode. Um, but yeah, the, there's, the guys come out of these little cubby holes, um, particularly the big guys with the machine guns, so you gotta close off the cubby holes or else they'll shoot you because machine guns really, really hurt in this. Um, anyway, uh, once again, the combat was pretty easy. It's pretty, um, pretty simple to drift through these levels, it's, uh, thankfully. Because if, if the controls were wonky, I don't think I could play this. Because <laughs> I'm not really good at handheld stuff. I, I am so bad at, like, I'm definitely a... I think that somebody came up with this term, and I don't know. Like, there was there were three generations of gamers. There's, like, the, the SNES gamer or whatever that's, um, that's used to these extremely huge um, learning curves. And, okay, there we go. There's That's the uh, mega attack I can use. Because I was like, I want to use this. He uses giant cannon that blows everything off the screen. Um, and what's funny is you can access that again fairly quickly. Um, it's not like a one-time use thing. It's just um, wait till that cannon pops back up and you can use it again uh, if you have enough symbols. Like I just used a little bit of cannon there. Um, I kept making a wall. I get bleh. It's because the touch screen is weird when you're using a, a mouse pointer, but. Um, 
But yeah, I'm not gonna complain about the controls in this game because they're pretty kick-ass. Um. Well, anyway, what was I going to say? The, people are like, okay, there's the extreme learning curve SNES gamer who's used to, like, you know, 2D side-scrolling and pulling off these insane combos and precision work and, you know, these really, really, really uh, devout gamers. And then there's, like, the next generation. Okay, th these boxes, I was like, well, I can't get over these. So I tried to make um, a massive cat cannon, and these giant heads came down. And they didn't do any more damage than a um, than a normal cannon would have. So I was like, okay, never mind. I'll use the normal cannon. But they were kind of cute. Um, and for those who don't know, I, I assume I, I got a comment on the last one from somebody who'd never seen FMA. So okay, whatever. But if you don't know, Alphonse, the big guy in the armor, loves kitty cats. So he's kitty cat themed things. But anyway, I'm gonna actually finish what I was trying to say earlier. Um, as you can see, Alphonse is fighting here, and it's not. There's not really much to comment on that except for Alphonse. I hated playing him. I was like, "All right, we're gonna do Alphonse. What's his strength? He's just about as strong as Ed. Like, I think it takes just as many hits to take out the bad guys. I bet his defense is better. Although it shouldn't. If you wanted to be strictly accurate, it shouldn't hurt him at all. If somebody punches him or kicks him, it shouldn't have any effect on him whatsoever. But that would make the game too easy. So, bleh. His defense is probably better, but his offense isn't any higher than Ed's. But he is slower, and he, you know, <laughs> more awkward. So I was like, I don't like playing as Alphonse at all. Do not want. So anyway, um, there's the uh, 2D gamer, and then there's the 3D gamer, and I fit in this uh, category, who are used to having it a little easier and want an immersive experience, you know, when they game and stuff like that. And it's it's more about the experience than it is the um, the gameplay, but it's still sort of a, about the gameplay, and they're used to some manner of difficulty and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but mostly they're the middle ground. And then you have the, this, this newer generation who are getting into the more high-res um, games and the online game. And for them, it's it's about it's so much about the experience that it's about multiplayer, it's about having online access, and it's about um, being completely immersed in it, even if the gameplay is like minimal to not like okay, one way you can look at this is if you've seen the evolution of the Prince of Persia games and how that changed, you know, they have the original Prince of Persia, the two D side scroller with the uh, more realistic platforming where you fall two inches and you die. And then you have the um, the first three D iteration of Prince of Persia, um, and that those sequels, and that the, and they had this more comprehensive story. And I failed that, so I got to redo it. I have to redo the whole level if you fail that one thing, because I think I touched the wrong dot. You have to touch these dots in order. Anyway, so um, yeah, the second Prince of Persia has more um, comprehensive story or whatever, and it's a lot of it is about the visuals or whatever. But there's still a lot of you know, there's a lot of combat going on there, and. Um, uh, shouldn't have, yeah, bleh, I don't know what I was saying. I, again, gaming is not my forte. I am not the type to be talking about this, but it is something I noticed. Um, and uh, bleh. So, so you have a lot of combat going on, yet the platforming is more immersive, blah, 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 but there's still a gameplay element. And by the time you've gotten to the reboot of Prince of Persia, you have this third type of gamer where... The voice acting is stellar, the the visuals are great, or whatever, but there's really, it's all quick time events. The whole game. I haven't actually played this one because I don't own the system, but I was curious and I watched a walkthrough of it um, a little bit. Uh, not very far, I had watched like the first uh, 45 minutes or so of the game and I was like, okay, I get the idea, this is going to be really repetitive and boring. And, um, yeah, it's like all these quick time events and constant cutscenes and stuff like that. So, like, gaming has become ironically a little bit more... <laughs> like a movie, <laughs> then, you know, and I, I know, all games are different, and that's not really fair, but I think the audience for it has come to expect some different things. I think they've come to expect it to be more like a movie or whatever. The entire reason, so it's gone slowly from more of a technical art to more of an experiential art, I guess, um, and, and what people expect for it and how they grade games, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm not a gamer. Maybe I'm totally talking out of my ass, but this is what I've noticed in, like, the ages of people that I talk to that are gamers. Like, people that were, when I was little, that would game and what they talked about, what they were looking for in a game, and then when I got into gaming and my friends, and now the, and now my sister and her friends. And, um, yeah, it's really changed. Um, even, like, the Pokemon games and shit like that have changed as far as the gameplay and what, what people are looking for. Anyway, the whole reason I said that is I was like, I'm the second type. I'm somewhere in the middle where it's like, you know, I, I don't want to sit down and watch a movie because if I want to watch a movie, I'll watch a movie. And it's going to be better than, you know, than, um, than a video game anyway because, yes, I'm biased against video game stories. I know there's some good ones, but, you know, I mean, 
of course I'm biased. I watch movies and stuff rather than play games. Um, but, uh, blah, 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 blah. What was I saying? Oh yeah, this is still going on. I'm talking about stuff that has nothing to do with Fulman Alchemist. This is episode 5. They fight terrorists on a train. It's kind of badass. What is there to say? I and mean, you can see the gameplay. It's just all side scrolly, fighty stuff. And, uh, very faithful to the show, though. Um, this is an episode that was really easy to translate into a uh, video game. But, you know, you're, you're, he, that's what he spends a lot of the episode do, is doing, is train walking and kicking baddies. So, yes. Anyway, um, I like the ki the kittens everywhere. <laughs> I like the kitten motif going on in this level. Oh, uh, but I'm definitely that second type. To the oh, that's so cute. He they actually had his "Welcome to the Brig" line in there. You had this, you know. I know that that's that, that's a lot of the draw of the series in general. So I'm not really saying anything new by uh, noticing this. But one of the most charming things about FMA is you have this little bitty boy voice in this giant, you know, suit of armor. <laughs> he's, you know, he's invincible and he should be very monstrous or whatever, and then he's just this cute little kid. And, um, he's very sensitive, and it's cute. Uh, so this was fun. This guy, this, this is different from, like, Finding the Chimeras or Cornella, which was cake or whatever. This guy gets some good hits on, in on me. Uh, close to the end, I started getting careless, and he's just wailing on me, man. Oh, there's another nice um, attention to detail thing. Look, you can see the General uh, Hakuro and his family in there, which uh, you can tell is an older Funimation dub because in the dub they call him General Hakuro, and it's like <coughs> Hakuro. But now, actually, they can kind of get away with that because uh, FMA is set in a European kind of universe, and for all we know, you're not supposed to pronounce it Hakuro. You know, maybe maybe we're wrong, and you don't pronounce it that way because you know. He doesn't look Japanese to me. Does he look Japanese to you? You know, I don't know. Maybe it, it would be silly maybe to use, like, strict Japanese pronunciation. Like, I think it's kind of, you can give or take it because everybody's named, like, Edward and Roy and stuff like that. That's very Western names. So if you pronounce it more Western, it kind of fits better. If you suddenly said Hakuro or whatever, it would be kind of weird. So maybe I'm wrong. Oh, this. Uh, just listen to this for half a second. I'm going to be quiet, I guess, and, um... Listen to what they did to poor Travis Willingham's reads on these lines. <laughs> Do you hear that? They sped him up because I guess the the um, they had to make it fit within the um, which is particularly funny because in the anime I remember those lines being really really slow. Um, just Travis Willingham's a new VA, like he hadn't done a whole lot of voice work, and he sounded like he was trying to match Flap and still kind of keep emotion in there, and they went with it. It doesn't sound bad, but it sounds sort of like a newbie, because he's like, hell, you can call me the Flame Alchemist, and it sounds like he's kind of trying to match Flap. So yeah, for this, it's really funny that they sped him up, because he's like, remember the pain. <laughs> so, um, lol. And, um, yeah, I guess to match the text, the speed of the text on screen. And, uh, anyway, what was the, oh yeah, the last thing I was going to say, you see General Hakuro back there or whatever, they call him Hakuro, but what's even funnier is I watched the original Adult Swim run of the show, and there were several, like, little mistakes that they had made in dubbing. Not a whole lot, but a few that when they first sent it to Air TV, um, uh, excuse me, Air on Adult Swim, I said Air TV, it makes me think of Moe, bad memories. Oh god, and yes, you are seeing this. They talk about the Nina Tucker story in this game. It's not like you were going to play it as a level. They could have left it out. They could have, you know, left the fans alone. But no, they felt like they needed to twist that knife a little more. So they included the Nina Tucker details in this stupid... Uh, well, I don't want to call it a stupid game. I'm enjoying playing it. So <laughs> they included the details in that game. Like, why did you do that? Um, I am sad. Anyway... But back when it first it aired on Adult Swim, and I wish there was a list of these online because I don't think I can remember them all. And I don't think I, I don't think I have the old VHS tapes that I used to tape it off of TV anymore. If I do, I need to go back to my uh, parents' house and find some of those old tapes and see what's on them because um, in the original when they first dubbed the series and they put it to air on TV, um, they changed this for the DVD release. They changed it and they made sure everything was in line, whatever. But he calls him. <laughs> the the terrorist leader calls him General Haruko, which is like a girl's name. <laughs> it's a very girly name, and it's like, no, no, Hakuro. 